Good Hi, afternoon, this is me, this Maria, looking at some question. more questions. How was the process of the operations? So the, the first one about, about the beginning of the After apparitions. After August 8, 2007, the Virgin Mary appeared So to it's Friday this lady here and the young guy at least that have the apparitions to, to begin with. In one of these occasions, she requested Mother Maria Shimoni to go to Brazil, specifically to the community To go and see this guy, Jose Tigarino. spoke openly with Jose Trigueirinho, who is the founder yeah, of the a community complete new age and guru to about the apparitions and informed into UFOs. Him that the Virgin Mary wanted to appear in Figueira. We gathered all the courage we had available and just like the Virgin had asked I think he knew already, I think it was a planned meeting. The community of Figueira, the community of Figueira was like a kind of hippie, hippie community. Hippie, without knowing how we were going to address the to uh, tell movement. him we had been experiencing apparitions of the Virgin Mary and that she wanted to appear in Figueira. When we talked to Trigueirinho and explained to him with details what was happening to us they keep and using what the Virgin, Virgin Mary at this point wanted, because they want us to think us of the historical he Mary of Nazareth for a long time for the but they're not talking about her they're talking about the mother of in humanity in January 25th, 2008 the Virgin Mary appeared privately to a small you know, group it makes it sound like the beginning of a genuine apparition the of the apparitions in the yeah, it sounds like Medjugorje even, doesn't it? Heat of apparitions that day Trigueirinho knew down facing the apparition of the Virgin and he offered her everything he and had. And he never lived as a Catholic, he died community. outside of the Catholic so Church in this New Holy Age Mother, community. The Most Holy Mary, just like she needed it, she could have this place available yeah, to do task. he gave his New and Age so community to them. And so it transformed on, to being a kind of pseudo-Catholic New Age place. Of each month rather than being a hippie place. So they had loads of apparitions. 2010 and 2011. These were years of profound conversions, prayer, preparation, and it's purification for our But they already as were visionaries, and right? Of the I don't know what that was about. What would come afterwards. On August 18th, 2011, we were in the community of Aurora, in the north of the state of Paysandu, in Uruguay, it was dawn when Fray Elias started to knock on my bedroom's door. He told me that the Virgin Mary had woken him up and that she wanted to speak to both of it's us. It's an unusual event. Thus, we went to the orange groves that are on the field of the community and there Mother Mary appeared for the two of us and she asked us if we were willing to definitely renounce our lives and accompany so what, they her weren't to already carry out doing this in some way they hadn't already made this little public group apparitions. oh public apparitions we said yes to her that we would always accompany her in whatever she needed in total obedience thus the public apparitions began what made them public in apparitions of the same oh year they had messages to give publicly from that point onwards Mary began, and they continue to this day on the day when the one year of daily messages was completed on November 15th, 2012, in an apparition in the Marian Center of Aurora, the Virgin Mary announced that she would appear to one more visionary, and she called Sister Lucia de Jesus, who was already so a nun Our Lady of our said, order. I'm going to now appear to Sister on, Lucia. The sister began and then to participate she did, a, in she did receive the visions from then on. Mother, one more question. How long have you been visionaries? And what is a visionary? This part's a bit boring. But it's an unusual term that she uses, right? Clairvoyance. We normally use that word to talk about communication with the dead. Divinity communicating to humanity. I thought it was Our Lady. You see, there's this weird thing about whether Our Lady is the historical Mary of Nazareth or if it's some divine force being manifested in Mary. Those who in so they're like, they're trying to say they're prophets. Time, they so she's visionaries. basically like Moses and Elijah. But we say that that was public revelation, don't we? And we talk about visionaries as private revelation. But according to her, she has public revelation, new revelation. But what characterizes them is that the divinity addresses them directly. Yeah. 
The intermediate visionaries are those people who, for different reasons, have other visions, access other realities in different ways, with different amplitudes, but the divinity does not address them directly. Interesting, isn't it? This is kind of weird it is Gnosticism. It is clear that God communicates with the visionaries rather than the visionaries communicate with God. They do not call God when they think sure. or feel like. It is always a movement that is Although made from the divinity. Although it does seem to happen every day so they can give a daily message. A visionary is a person who strives to become empty of This is standard fare that you'd expect them to be saying. For not wanting anything you know, for we are just humble instruments. Just humble God, instruments. In total gratitude and obedience. Of course. Each person comes to this world with a spiritual and material This is the kind of enabling thing, Therefore, talking to the audience, right? The, Telling all of us that we that have this ability, each one of us. Considers to be necessary. Generally, the visionaries have spirit spiritual experiences and visions with the divinity and the angels since they are children, so that their souls may gradually enter into this task. And when the moment defined by God comes, they begin to experience the first apparitions and receive the first instructions. I think they're almost encouraging in others Mary. to kind of say when they're also visionaries. Did the visionaries leave the Catholic Church? Yeah, this is a good one. Never Catholics. Yes, I participated in the Catholic. So he talks religion about how he was a faithful Catholic as a boy, I had the grace of and he and he talks about it in a very positive way. And some of its activities. And obviously, this is talking example, to the audience because of the parish, most of the, the audience are Catholics. The to call for the mass. I was the altar boy. I participated in the. That's Legion tragic that he was in the and Legion of Mary, Cat and now he's Catholic abandoned the Catholic way. faith. During the years when I participated, the, the church taught me to think of being somebody in life, of learning to serve. Yeah, is that all the church to taught the you? Rosary and to carry the image of our yeah, that would have probably Fatima been with the Legion of Mary the doing the families. statue visitation. All of this is strengthened my faith, still being very young, and it had repercussions in the decision of leading a healthy and family life as well as pr being protected from the So he's kind of telling us that the Catholic faith of seeking Christ in the was Eucharist a good thing. It was a good thing in his life, but wait for it, something else is coming in a second. And the mercy of God. In this time, as a teenager, my sight oh, began to expand. His sight began to expand. Visions, and I did not find any answer to what It's the devil, to. Elias. So I tried to focus on studying and working to help my family. So he ignores I the messages. I pray and serve as I had learned. A commitment and there's this fight within him, I suppose, until eventually it was a commitment gives in with God beyond, beyond any, any institution. institution. Until one day, Our Lady, the Virgin Mary, of called course, me Our Lady again calls him to leave the to Catholic her faith and her to serve her son better. Yeah, in right. My case, at now home, we're talking. I did not this is the voice a of Sister Lucia. But I studied from childhood to high school in the monastery of Saint no Benedict Catholic formation, of Olinda, she went to a Catholic school, which though. is the city where I was born. And that's what she had. There I had a Catholic, Catholic formation. formation. But afterwards, ah, when I was a teenager, I didn't continue to deepen into spirituality. When I was 16 years old, I lived an inner crisis, an inner crisis that had nothing to do with a material fact. It was simply an inner discontent. Many people have that. I didn't find encouragement of course, in anything. The Catholic Church I didn't did find an answer to my questions anywhere. Questions. And I asked my mother but for help, mom who had been coming to the has community been going to the the new age for many community. years, and who had she a prayer much group at our home. She wasn't much was she? So she brought me here to get to know Figueiredo. She Figuera. was already a new age hippie when person. When I came into for UFOs. the first time, it was as if and I contact. had woken up from a dream and re-encountered God. At 17 years old, with the support of my parents yeah, and my brother all kind and of sisters, of the, I made the decision to the come and live already. here. They already accepted so their I ideology. had a Catholic formation, and the basis of my faith was built there. But I went beyond But it. when I really defined myself and made the decision to of follow course, Christ, following Christ was here meant in leaving this the one true church that our Lord founded. In my case, I went now my whole life to Catholic schools. 
both in primary school as high school. I almost in primary looking at school, her, I went to the school of the Sisters better. Missionaries there's of something Mary. When I see her, and high school, I, can't I went to the think school of certain, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Certain malice in her. I don't although know. With, 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 the other two, I don't know, but this one here. We distanced here, ourselves from Catholic yes, practice for different reasons. Yes. Faith is something unbreakable, yes, faith. at least within ourselves. Faith outside of Catholic faith. One more question to Friar Elias. Friar, when did Christ Jesus begin to deliver his daily messages? On January 5th, 2013, while we were praying in one of the communities, I had a clear and so precise vision of our Lord. So it seems like to begin with it was Our Lady, or he this, I won't even call it Our Lady. Ha sacred Heart of Jesus, but then and this apparition repeated itself twice, twice more, in other two moments of prayer. In this first apparition of Jesus, His presence and love were very in this first apparition of Jesus, His presence and love were very strong. I had no doubt that it was Him. I was hardly going to tell Him. Right you're after go our hell. Lord spoke to you're me and asked religion. me that on the following day we gathered in prayer to receive him because he would come to transmit us a message. In that moment, I didn't know what All it right. was about. In obedience, we did what he asked us. The following day, we prayed and our Lord appeared again and delivered it's, a message. It's... He requested it's me to write in my notebook kind of make and us he said that it was the, the first daily message of their and that religion. from then on, By talking for about one more year in a row, Jesus was, would transmit at three the in the afternoon, the hour of mercy, his daily messages. To he follow indicated that Christ as says. a preparation to receive his message, I should pray a 150 beats yeah, of the chapter of Divine Mercy that, every day. That won't take you more than... That won't take you more than the apparitions 20 minutes. of Jesus happened during one entire year. What our Lord said was fulfilled. In the following years, he delivered more daily messages again, then weekly messages, and lastly, monthly oh, messages. Like our Lady in monthly In one messages. of his apparitions, Christ Jesus asked us to carry out a spiritual exercise every fifth and sixth of each month, which he called the Marathon of Divine Mercy. In which on the fifth and sixth of each month we prayed one thousand and five hundred and they of the chaplet of divine mercy. As a, they've copied it, it is a public and free of charge yeah, of meeting of prayer of charge. that has been occurring yeah. since two thousand and thirteen. You're just saying so far, the divine mercy. Eighty two marathons of prayer have been carried out in various countries of South America, Central America, the United States and Europe, Mainly which are South transmitted America, live on Misericordia Almost Maria TV, uniting America. hearts of the whole world to ask for mercy, for this humanity, mm. and for you this see planet. see that little sting in the My tail about humanity and the, the planet. Sister, Planetary when did healing Saint Joseph through begin prayer? to appear, and why? In March of and again, 2013, in her discussion of Saint Joseph, during a monthly apparition of the Virgin Mary, she came okay, accompanied you know, by Saint Joseph, it sounds and like she this said could be a that from Gloria, March Garibaldal, 19th of that but year, for the sting Saint Joseph the would begin delivering messages to humanity. Because always, there's a kind of new age sting in he the tail that, that you don't notice to begin with, and especially as you listen Someone to all this stuff, the human you know, Saint Joseph knows the human he condition, he was simple, and he teaches us how to go beyond the world. Only stimuli but wait all our it. miseries it's and difficulties coming. to so begin that with, we may we're surrender drawn to the will of think, the Father. Oh, this sounds really Catholic. She sounds really Catholic. It must be and the this genuine Saint mean Joseph. That the apparitions of Christ and the Virgin Mary are not enough. The apparitions of Saint Joseph just reveal to us the infinite love and mercy of God, who, in spite of giving us yeah. all, is always willing to give more. We believe that it, oh, this also reveals a great mystery that we, we hold go. within and that it is urgent that okay. we may discover and live. This is why our Creator sends His messengers what to the message? world, the Sacred Hearts, so that through them we may learn not only to fulfill the Divine Will, but also to express what it is to be a human Express being, what it is to be a this human that being. His Son lived here and that He left sure, as an example for man, us. We know that. So each divine messenger has a way to teach us to go through this path and live this it's inner revelation. And, and is Saint as Joseph humanity one of the divine is so messengers? diverse and they are here for Yet all, each being has an opportunity to find oneself all. through these merciful instructions that God has granted to us. Sister, mm. and what are the Marian centers that belong to your work? 
The Marian centers are places that the Virgin Mary consecrated that, you know, our so that her children shrines. could find peace through prayer. Each Marian center was requested by her and, and all the details like, uh, for its construction, you know, construction were worker. given by the Virgin Mary, well, Christ Jesus, Joseph, and St. Joseph. All the spaces at this. that exist there the fountains, the houses and of, of prayer, the blue and stay cross, there for a price. everything was requested by the sacred there. hearts and blessed sacred by hearts. them for humanity. They are places Requested where we by can the find sacred peace. Hearts. We may participate phrase. in the liturgies, pray, find the God, and carry within us the graces that the Most Holy Virgin left there. They are also She's, places where we may serve us through us to go prayer, praying for this to their world places, that needs basically. so much. For the kingdoms of nature, for each the being. Kingdoms of nature need the Marian so much. centers, as well as the Marian Another shrines that Gnostic, Our Lady New instituted in through her apparitions in different that places you've got to be of really the world, wary of are sacred these places where we all can strengthen ourselves internally, internally and bring a little bit more of peace for the world. Sounds nice, doesn't it? We have some questions to Friar okay, Luciano. So Friar, Father Luciano is obviously on the council. For? He's not a visionary. At the request of the Virgin Mary, the first consecration that was carried out order, in the order the was in the afternoon of March of the order. 19th, 2009, in the this community Aurora of Aurora in Uruguay. Strange. Again, Aurora, when in a Uruguay very simple has ceremony lots of in the UFO of the history. field of it's Orange kind of Groves, UFO lovers hotspots. nine brothers and sisters prostrated before God and promised to serve Him eternally. Then we tied a rope around our waists, a symbol of our vows. It was something simple, but that will remain etched forever in our lives. Then a few days later, also Again, in a very simple Figueira, ceremony, other brothers and sisters were consecrated place, in, co in the community of Figueira. Kind of we were New Age the place. 16 first consecrated, okay, so then there consecrated 16 members afterwards. of the order. In January of 2010, the Grace Mercy Order was constituted as a, as a religious, religious association. association makes it sound which Catholic, right? Around 350 as if the Vatican consecrated them. brothers and That's sisters deliberate. among monastics so and non-monastics. So there's 350 members. Friar, and how was not the huge, work organized from the institutional nothing. point of view? Okay, the at this point, he's going to talk to us about their humanitarian work. And I'm going to shorten this section. He talks an awful lot now about their humanitarian work, so that we're going to be really impressed about how much humanitarian Brazil, work they do around the world, around making us believe well, this is a really good Belo group. Horizonte, this is definitely Minas from Gerais, God. Brazil. And this is, of course, a classic dodgy religion stroke cult tactic. You know, cults always want to tell you about the humanitarian work they're doing, and they go on and on and on about it. It's interesting how the Catholic Church doesn't really wave a flag saying that, you know, it's the largest educational provider around the world. It runs more AIDS clinics than any other institution in the world, the largest healthcare provider in the world. You know, it's this little group, this little sect has to spend, and he goes on for nearly 12 minutes on the real video, talking about all their little humanitarian things that they've done. And we had that in the previous video, which I think, Anna, I think I snipped away some of it. And in the final video, it's even more because they want the Catholic faithful who are watching the video to give them money to give them money because they think, oh, the money that I give them is going to all their humanitarian work. Of course, they're giving something to their humanitarian work, of course, but a lot of it's gonna be maintaining this massive media apostolate and propagating this false religion. May Almighty God bless you, may Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.